Hello and welcome back keto lovers. Today I'm going to be making cookies. I'm going to be making three different kinds but I'm going to work using two videos and the first one I'm going to make the base shortbread. So the first one is about making the base cookie mixture and the second one will be about doing the various fillings. So I'm going to do three fillings. I'm going to do a caramel filling. I'm going to do a jam filling and I'm going to be doing a peanut butter filling alright so so we're going to take the base mixture and then we're just going to expand on it alright so the next shot we're going to take a look at the ingredients they're pretty simple and the recipe is fairly easy uh, so uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble with making the base and then we'll get into making the various fillings on the second video alright see you soon Hello, I'm back with my ingredients for the shortbread cookie recipe and in keto style it's got plenty of fat. So I've got two sticks of butter and half a packet of cream cheese, full fat cream cheese, alright? Um, you can use a little bit less if you want to but I'm using the half packet, alright? So two sticks of butter which is about eight table, uh, sorry, 16 tablespoons and half a pack of cream cheese which is about four ounces. Alright, and to that I'm going to be adding uh, some blanched, remember that, blanched almond flour. So fine, alright, so fine blanched almond flour. Now I want it blanched because I want my shortbread to be white, alright, or whitish or, you know, light. So that's, I'm using that. Um, we've got three tablespoons of coconut flour. And we use the coconut flour to balance out the, um, the smoothness or the softness of the cookie, all right? Because almond flour can be a little too coarse, all right? And then um, the, the secret recipe is this. This is one tablespoon of psyllium husks and one tablespoon of uh, hemp seed. And I, and I crush them fine in a coffee grinder, all right? And then we're going to use some erythritol uh, substitute sugar, about eight t six to eight tablespoons, depending on sweetness and the consistency. Uh, you need some vanilla. Oop, where's my vanilla? Right there. And some salt. All right, and we'll add the salt at the end. Now, I'm going to be using a pastry cutter, and you want everything at war room temperature if possible. All right, so try and get um, your... Um, butter and your cream cheese at room temperature and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be incorporating all the dry ingredients so I'm going to start doing that but I'm going to stop and then um, I'll come back when um, it's, a, it's a good enough consistency to make into a dough ball all right so I've added the almond flour and I've added the coconut flour and I'm just going to break this with my pastry cutter. If you don't have a pastry cutter, don't worry about it. You can do this with a, a beater, all right? So um, just all you want to do is you want to slice up the um, butter and the cream cheese together into the flour and incorporate them gradually, all right? We're not in a hurry. We're not running a race or anything, So, and we want a nice product. So take your time doing this, and as you keep chopping or beating with your beaters, the uh, butter will incorporate with the dry ingredients, all right? So I'm going to take that off. And what you want to end up with is somewhat something of a dough, all right? So you want to get to a point where you have a doughy consistency. All right, now I'm going to add my hemp and my psyllium husks. And it's pretty easy, as you can see. This is not going to take very long to put together. It's already incorporating very well. And now I'm going to add my uh, erythritol. I'm going to add it gradually. Chunk of it right there. And what the um, psyllium husk does and the... Um, what is it? Um, flax, uh, hemp seed is it gives the cookie a little bit more structure and body. All right. Now, 
as soon as this is done and everything is incorporated, I'm going to add my vanilla in a minute. Um, well, you want to put this in the fridge so that you can work on it and, and form it into a dough because right now it's a bit soft. All right. So I'll come back when I get to my, actually, let me add my vanilla real quick. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. And this is the only liquid you're going to add to this. All right. And we're going to add a bit of salt, all right? About a quarter teaspoon of salt, maybe a little bit more. I'll be generous. All right. But these, these, can, these can handle the salt. All right. And then I'll be back after the mixture has been in the refrigerator for about an hour. You want it to be fairly solid when you start working with it. All right. So just in case you've never seen hemp heart seeds, um, this is what they look like. All right. The bag at least. And these are available uh, on my Keto Pantry. Okay. So um, there's a page on the blog that is called the Keto Pantry and all the products that I use and equipment and gizmos and everything, books, they're all on that pantry page, all right? And I'm going to try and put a link on it. Um, I always put a link on it, should I say, at the bottom of all the videos so you can get to the recipe and the pantry if you uh, don't have these locally in your area. So these, I use these because they have negligible carbs. So they have for three tablespoons, um, they have three grams of carbs and three grams of fiber. So it's basically, this is a zero carb um, grain type product. And it gives bulk to whatever you're, you're, you're cooking. So I tend to use this a lot in baked things. Hi folks, I'm back with my cookie dough out of the fridge. Now, um, I left this overnight in the fridge, but you can just stick it in the freezer if you're in a hurry for 30 minutes and get it to be uh, quite tough <laughs> or rollable, it's going to start melting because it's butter and um, things that have a low um, cooling point. So once you get this um, out of the freezer, you want to start working with it right away. Right? Um, you will also need to have a coin of your choice. So I think um, I usually use a dollar coin because it has a nice depth to it. This is a pound, because I'm from England, so of course I'm going to use a pound. Um, but then you want to roll these out, and with that uh, batter mixture that I had for the cookie dough, I made six of these rolls. And you can freeze these, as I mentioned, and take them out whenever you want cookies, right? And the goal is to get about 30 cookies out of all of your dough. So um, it's still a bit cold, but I'm going to try and work with it. And you want to have um, a nice, I'm going to actually take it off the, um, the, the parchment uh, or the uh, wax paper. And you can put some flour down if you want. Um, I don't like it to be too doughy, so I work with it as is. And we're going to um, get this to be as round and rolly as possible. All right, and you don't want to work with it too much because, as I said, it's going to melt very quickly. All right. And get it to a point where it's fairly round. And then with a very sharp knife, let me, where's my very sharp knife? It's not here. All right, here we go. We'll use this one. We want to cut these into cookie slices, all right? So um, these are, remember, shortbread dimple cookies. So we want to have very um, small even slices, right? One fat one at the end. Let's see what we can do with that. All right. So here we go. So this is what your objective is, to get these shapes. All right? And then you want to put them on a parchment sheet. I'm going to do that. And if you're not ready to bake them yet, that's okay. You can pop these in the refrigerator and, until you're ready. Throw these on there. Well, not throw, but nicely position these on here. And then with your coin, remember you had that coin. I'm just going to move this out of the way right now. 
you're going to take. So I made two, four, five, I made ten in one of those rolls, and I have another roll left to cut. So what you want to do is you want to take your, your coin, and some you can use your fingers, and just make an indent, all right, with the coin. And then you'll need another knife. Of course, I'm very unprepared, as usual. You'll, um, you'll, you'll take your coin out very slowly, and you have an indent, and you, this indent is what you're going to fill with the fillings that we're going to make on the second video, all right, so we'll take that off, put that back in, there, and then we'll do the same thing here, all right, so when you roll this, remember that you need a, an, a coin that's going to fit whatever shape you've created when you cut these slices, all right, and lift that out, and so on and so forth. So I'll complete the rest of these and I'll come back and show you what they all look like before they go into the oven. So folks, here are my uh, dimple cookies, all right? Um, so when you get them to this stage, you want to put them in the fridge for about 10 minutes. So they're really cold when they go into the oven because um, because of the amount of butter they have in them, they're going to melt really quickly. And you don't want that to happen. You want them to keep their form. Then the oven has to be around 250 to 275, a very low heat, for about six minutes, and you have to watch them, all right? Otherwise, they will burn, and you don't want that to happen, all right? So I'll show you what they look like when they come out of the oven. This is what the cookies look like after, when they're, they, after they've come out of the oven, all right? So this was at 275 for about 10 minutes. You really need to watch them because they start to spread if you keep them in the oven too long. And you don't want that. Now, timing is important. This is what they look like at 350 for 12 minutes, all right? So they've spread and they've burnt, which is not what you want, all right? So um, this is not the desired thing. So when you get to this point, you want them to cool, and then you want to put them in the fridge and let them cool in the fridge for a little while before you, before we put in the uh, filling that we're going to make to put inside. All right? So there's a, a couple of fillings that I'm going to do today. I'm going to do a chocolate one, and I'm going to do a uh, fruity one. All right? And there's many other things that you can do. You can buy the little um, flowers, edible flowers in the grocery store and put those in the middle and then put on a very fine glaze of icing on top. You can dust them with confectioner's flour, that's another thing. Um, you can make um, a caramel, a salted caramel and put that inside and I might do that, I might do that on another video, uh, do a salted caramel. Um, or uh, what's the other thing? Uh, peanut butter. You can also do a peanut butter filling. So that's the caramel filling, but instead of the salted part, you add peanut butter. All right? So um, um, we'll do that. See, they're very soft, and they need to go in the fridge once this um, uh, baking tray has um, cooled down a bit. 